Alrighty guys, I'm Casey and welcome to a brand new series here on the channel guys. Welcome to a SMP series that I'm going to be playing along with my wife and a good friend of mine. Now, those two don't normally make videos, but they may make videos here and there. And we're going to open up this episode by talking very briefly about what this series is going to be about. We are each going to be creating up our own kingdoms. You can see our coordinates are back there to where our kingdoms will be located. These are all within walking distance of each other, but not within seeing distance. But it's more than that. They're also in different biomes, and each one has a village. So it's a really good start already. It took us lots... Of, okay, no, it didn't take us lots of It took us three. Three seeds to find this one. It, look, we're shining down upon us now this series is going to see storylines treaties wars alliances everything go on throughout the storylines so without any further ado guys if this is something you think you're going to be into do me a favor leave the video a like and hit subscribe and if you check out the description down below if those two are making videos i will most definitely be posting their links down below but without any further ado guys let's get into the episode so when coming up with the idea for a series i actually was speaking it over with my daughter my daughter was like oh you should do role play you should do this that and other and i was like you know what maybe i will and then she went into her laptop and on the interwebs and her artistic finger started going and this skin that I am wearing now is the one that she did for me. So we're just going to take a little bit of a look at it. You can see I've got a black beard even though my beard is blonde. But I've still got a black beard. I wear this long gothic red coat in real life and she's made my skin to do just that. And it looks really, really cool. I wear yellow tinted glasses to ease with eye strain and headaches. And I've even got them on there as well. But I love all of this. But there's one detail that I would never have thought to put on this coat that she has. And she has thought of everything. And I'm really happy with it. If you look on my left arm there, I've got this like red dot. What that is, that is a camera. That is how I am recording my Minecraft adventure. That's how much detail she thought about when putting it on this skin. But my daughter is an artist and she loves copyright. So if you look at my right leg, you can see there's like a little S down there. That's my daughter's copyright logo that she stuck on my leg. <laughs> I don't even get the own copyright to my own skin. My 12 year old is keeping that for herself. But I wanted to show off this skin because it's absolutely amazing. I love it. I love it. Oh, I haven't added a new skin in forever, and this one is amazing. Anyway, my coordinates are minus one, two, three, positive seven, four, three. That is a desert, that is a village, and we are going to head over there right now. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright and for the first time in a long time, I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago When the day is dawning on a Texas, so it's not Texas, is it? So it's not a Texas Sunday morning. But we're here. We have arrived in this village. Now there's not too much going on here. We got a few friendly faces, and I need to make friends. But I can't do any of that. I'm currently a little bit low on food. So I'm going to make some bread, and I'm going to steal your wheat. I do greatly apologize for this. I'm borrowing it all right. I'll give it back. I will. I promise. 
I'll give it back. Oh, hello. Uh, let's not go and rub it in his face. Did he steal my house that I stole from them? I think he did. No, he didn't. I'm up here, look. Even though this isn't my house. But uh, it's the only vacant one. So we'll also make relations worse by nicking a crafting table too. Oh, look at that. Bread is done. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to chop down a little bit of wood. But, uh, you know, it, it, you have to. Every Minecraft game begins the same way. You got to punch a tree. So I'm just going to punch one tree. Oh, oh, sheep, sheep, sheep. I, I, I want sheep. I want sheep. And that's not the Welsh man in me talking. But I actually want them for what I'm planning to build here in the beginning. Anyway, it's time to choppy, choppy tree. Forget about diggy, diggy hole. It's choppy, choppy tree time. But first, it's crafty, crafty time. I just want a pickaxe, my friend. I'm going to go find some stone. And I'm going to get some stone tools going. Perfect. <laughs> yes, that's a pun. Because there's cats around here. So, I just want enough stone to get me started. Enough for maybe a furnace. Possibly even... A few stone tools. I think I'm probably going to go until this pickaxe just about breaks. I got 58, so it's crafty crafty time again. We got that uh, that nice little, whatchamacallit. Yeah, that thing that smelts stuff that I am completely spacing on the name. Uh, I want a pickaxe. I want an axe. And I most definitely want a sword. And you know what? We may as well go for a shovel too. Because why not? Yeah, these are all in the wrong order. But anyway, it's time to choppy choppy tree. One axe borders a fair amount of wood. It's enough to get us started, but, but. Now that we're at the beginning, well, no, now not that we're at the beginning. Now we're at the end of the game. There's something that I want to do all about the end of the game. This is the end of the day, Casey. Learn how it work. There's something that I want to do. And that is I want to trap the villagers inside the home. Now, I know this may sound mean, but these guys are going to be very, very important to us later on when it comes to wanting to trade and kind of all things like that. So I want to make sure that as many of them as possible survive. And unfortunately, that means being the evil guy who barricades them inside of their homes. Now, this world is not hardcore, but it is on hard mode. So zombies can break down doors. But I think I've got the vast majority of them. I do believe that I did get them all. There is a baby running around, but there's nothing I can do about the babies, if I'm honest with you, unless I block the door off on both bits. I don't really want to do that. Now, I did unblock my door where I'm currently staying by my friend's house. Me and my mates, you know. But yeah, we chop a choppy wood. And now we've got all of this. Now I can actually start working a little bit more towards what I want to do. But, missing iron. Need iron. It's not iron, but I found coal. <laughs> and I found copper. I just want some iron game. Some iron, please. I spy with my little eyes something beginning with a cave. It's a little bit of a cave. But all I need is a tad of iron. Holy crap. Oh, whew. I've just mined a piece and, uh, well, it all fell in on me. Day one. Casey gets buried alive. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I need a nervous breakdown corner. I need a nervous breakdown corner because I don't like being buried a freaking live. I don't like it. I don't like it. The surface is much better up here. I like it better up here. This sky and this sky and there's no sand burying me alive. Oh, okay, that cave was a bust. Let's go find another cave and I will grow some nerves of steel. Another cave with a Mr. Enderman lurking down there somewhere. I can hear his creepy sounds. Now, I need two pieces of iron. Will you be nice to me, game? I have gone unbelievably deep to find this. Why level 35? Which is actually, you know, considering the new caves, the cliffs update is actually quite shallow. But you know, you get the picture. We're down a lot. Can you please bugger off coordinates? All for two pieces of iron. There we go. Brilliant. Mark in the cave for future use. It's time to head on back to the village. And... Cook up our iron. Now, the main reason that I wanted shears is to do with the story that's going to be going on here. 
There are a few sheep just trailing about here. And there's a big water cavern there. I wonder if that goes down to a lush cave. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure on their actual spawning things. But there's one sheep. I want some more. But anyway, let's get into a little bit of the story. After stumbling across this village, I was an outcast. I bullied my way into a home and I stole their food. And already I've begun to build poor relations with them. And we need to sort this out. I want to take up residence in this village. I want to become a member of this community. And to do that, I need to smooth over and enhance relations. I can't do that if I keep kicking him, my newfound buddy, out of his bed. So, we're going to set up a camp outside of the village. All the way over here. And I want to build a nice little tent. I want to have a campfire outside of it. A couple of benches. You know, pretty much everything that we will need for the beginning of the game. So I did spend a little bit of time building myself a nice little tent. Let me give you the tour. So these bits back here are going to be for the workstations that we'll need. Things like furnaces, crafting tables, a blast furnace, a smoker. You know, those kind of things, the important things, that's going to be here. The floor is made entirely out of barrels for storage. I do like these. I'm not a fan of the texture, to be honest with you. But I needed some way to store all of my gear, and I thought this would be perfect. I mean, we could have put barrels along here, which is another option. But this gave me quite a bit of storage for the early game, and I'm fairly happy with that. Now, going out of here, you can see we've got a little bit of a pathway going off here, which will eventually connect up with the village. And then over here, we've got a nice little campfire. And it looks really, really good. We've got a nice little stockpile of wood and some... Bramble bushes over here that just make it feel like this is firewood. And I've gone ahead and I've stripped a little bit of these guys. Just to make it look as if this was already stripped in nature. And this was a tree that had fallen down and he had brought it over here for a log. Got some signposts on the back. And oddly enough, I thought that maybe when you stripped this, it may dislodge the signpost. It might pop off, but it actually doesn't. I thought it might do. First time I've done that. But yeah, I really do like this tent. We'll go back and you can take a good look at it from the outside. Looks like looks like a nice little camp. It's the first tent I can I think I've ever built in Minecraft. I don't think I've built any other tents. And I like it. I really, really like it. Now I did find a couple more sheep. And I put all the sheep over here for the wall. And that is all well and dandy. So now I think it's time that we cook ourselves up some lovely chickens. They're cooking there on the bonfire. And we have ourselves a little chat. You see, relations between us and the village is soured. But I did hear from talking about Elder Monk. He is apparently the guy who runs this village. So I think we should head over there, find Elder Monk, have a little chat, and see if there is any way we could possibly increase our relations and improve our alliances with them. Excuse me. Um, I'm looking for the village elder. I wish to make amends for my previous actions. Any house on the shoulder, far side, is there. Okay, the house on the far side of the village. Thank you very much, appreciate the time. According to that villager, this is the village elder. So the house on the far side, this is a house on the far side. Excuse me, sir, may I drop in and could we possibly have a chat? If you must. Fantastic. I'll be with you in a moment. Elder Monk. I want to start by just apologizing. What I did, you know, I, I, I came in, I took your food, and I stole a, a villager's bed, and I want to apologize for that. I really am truly sorry. But if you would just allow me to explain myself. I'm listening. It's been a long time since I've even seen another person. A year ago, something happened. And since then, I've been on my own. And just before I came across this village, I'd, I'd swam across an ocean, I'd run through the forest, I'd hit the heat of the desert, and to be honest with you, I just wasn't in the right mind in the state. I was, I was thirsty, I was hungry, and I just saw food, I saw shelter, I saw bed, and I thought, you know what, I really need to sleep, I really need to eat, and I just kind of went for it. And I know, I probably shouldn't have, but I wanted to let you know that I'm setting up camp, and I'm going to leave you alone, I'm not going to take any more of your food. And I just wanted to apologize. I understand your problems, young lad. But this is a village. We have survived the mobs of the night for centuries by sticking together. And you come in here taking the food that we had stockpiled, especially when food crops grow very slowly out here. That has put us as a detriment. 
Just the day before you arrived, our blacksmith, he was dragged from his bed out into the middle of the night by a horde of zombies and mobs of the night descended. And with him gone, we don't have any way to defend ourselves anymore. And you I know, I know. That's why I haven't just gone and, and taken off. I could have carried on camping, but no. It's time that I set up roots. I've been wandering for too long, and I know what I did was bad. But if you give me a chance, I can get you food, I can get you shelter. Trust me, I've done this before, I know what I'm doing. Just give me a chance. Laddie, forgiveness isn't given, it's earned. And if you want forgiveness, you're gonna have to prove it to us. Come back when you have something more concrete to offer. That it? Come on. Come on, just give me a bit, a bit more of a chance. Goodbye, laddie. That was an interesting chat, wasn't it? Anyone else think he sounded a bit like Grian? Oh. Anyways, relations are soured. We, we, we've worked towards increasing them, but uh, we need to prove ourselves to this guy. And I've got a couple of ideas. I thought, you know, maybe, maybe we could fight off the mobs of the night overnight one night. Um, but that's not going to do any long-term sort of solutions, is it? All that's going to do is save them one night. But we could be tri we could be trickery. We could use trickery. That's right. Could be trickery. No, we could be tricky and use trickery. We could al allow one of the zombies to hit them, then save the day and be viewed as a hero. But again, that's not my style. So I think the best thing to do is to build on what they said. The village blacksmith was dragged from his home. Now I've got no trail to follow, nothing to know where he's at. So there's nothing I can do about that. But the village blacksmith would be making weapons and swords and stuff for him. So, how about we contribute some weapons to the village elder? Enough so that the village actually can gear up. I think that'd be a great idea. So, I'm going to go find a cave. I'm going to mine some cobblestone. I will give each villager a cobble, a stone sword. I think that'd be a good idea. I've been out mining. I've got a whole entire chest full of stone swords. I'm hoping this is enough. I would love to give them better swords like I am, but unfortunately, with the blacksmith gone, I can't really forge anything better than stone right now. So, I'm hoping that these guys accept this tribute, and I'm hoping that it's enough. Let's go and have a word with the village elder and see what he says. He told me to come back when I had something worth offering. Well, I do. I've got something a little bit more concrete. No, it's not concrete. Ha! Got you there, though. No. If you would kindly turn your attention to this chest. Elder, I have brought you an entire stack of swords. This entire chest should be enough to keep the village safe and sound. Well, well there, laddie. <laughs> this does please me indeed. These are very nice. They'll, they'll, they'll do some damage for sure. Not very durable, but uh, yeah, I mean, they feel really good and they handle well. Do you know what, laddie? I think we can work something out. For a tribute such as this, we're more than happy to welcome you into our arms. You are now an official member of our little village. Welcome to Viridus. You have no idea how much that means to me. I've been on the run for so long, I mean, wandering for so long that I just... It's nice to be welcomed. I promise, I'm gonna contribute more. Enough of that, laddie. Just get out of here before I change my mind. Now that we've been welcomed into the village, just as Abyss was blown up by a creeper, I think it's time... Well, there's the villagers. The villagers are wandering. What are you doing? You're all supposed to be locked up in your houses. Safe and sound. Anyway, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start actually nabbing some of those flies. They did say we remember the village, so I am going to help myself to the wheat for early game food, as I don't really have a reliable way to get food. And as I said, I'm not the only one playing on this world. There are others playing on this world too. And they are supposed to be taking care of food. So I'm kind of waiting on them to set up some sort of trade so that we can get our hands on food. That being said, I think we've got enough to sort of see us through for the foreseeable future. There are a couple of hay bales around here. So I'm not exactly dire. And if need be, I will grow a little wheat patch. There are a couple in the village as is. Well, guys, the day is winding down. And the time has come for us to bring this episode to an end. But first of all, a new tradition that I want to start is we are going to read the memoirs. Memoirs of KC, Volume 1. Now these transpire from days 1 to 62 in game. Now this is a server, so these days do run while I'm off the server. This week I've learned an important lesson. Where there is redemption to be had, forgiveness will be offered. 
I can't believe after being on the run for over a year, I finally found a place I feel holds the key to my future. I know how to build, how to fight, and above all else, how to provide an example for others to follow. My past mistakes will always be there, and nothing I attain to do will ever change them. So I now hold my head high and focus on the events yet to transpire, those I have control over. I've repaired a ruptured relationship, strengthened my position out here in the wild. Despite the heat, the nights are bitterly cold. Perhaps I should be, sorry, perhaps I should begin my journey to acquiring my own plot of land inside the desert. It'll take time, but I'm optimistic about my future. I can offer this nomadic tribe and its elder invaluable lessons from my past. These mobs of the night seem to be a prominent threat. I could build walls, a watchtower, and even homes with defences to keep them at bay. Not safe. <laughs> yeah, I like the sound of that. I must be wary, however, as when mining stone, I bit off a little more than I could chew. I struck this tall, lanky black entity. He emitted these strange purple particles. I drew my blade and lashed out. I watched him fall from the cliff, but I foolishly, he struck me down and I died. And then, where to find the events of this episode. So yeah, I was out mining and looking for iron early on, when I did stumble across an enderman, and we dueled, I thought I was safe, he fell down a cliff, but then he teleported back up the cliff, and as I punched him, he punched me, he fell to his death, and I died. So I have had my first death, and I do have the exact time and date that that happened recorded. We'll build a graveyard in the future, and we'll encase our first death there. However, guys, I am going to be bringing an end to this episode. Now, the journal isn't without typos, I know, but it's signed so I can't go back and edit them. However, it'll remain intact the way it is and it still tells the story of episode 1. So guys, without any further ado, do me a favour, if you've enjoyed this video, leave it a like and if you've got comments on the storylines going on, please let me know down below. I would love to hear what your comments and what your ideas are for future storylines. But for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm Casey. You're the awesome folks. Thank you so much for watching. Take care now. Bye.